to American Sign Language Associated Performers' first ever performance. SLAP is so excited that you're here, and even more excited to show you what we do. In respect to the deaf community, the narrative parts of the show will be sung. Toop has generously provided a voice for SLAP's performers, which will help those who are signing impaired. Each song performed tonight has been painstakingly translated into a natural expression of sign language. In essence, the meanings of the songs have been transposed onto the hands via American Sign Language poetry. It cannot be stressed enough that the work that goes into translating a song from an audio to a visual language is equal to the amount of work that goes into writing a song from scratch. Coordinating the American Sign Language version of a song and matching it with the rhythm of a live musical group or recording requires <coughs> practice, patience, and skills on, all, on the parts of all parties involved. Throughout the evening, we hope to introduce you to several of the key elements of deaf culture and American Sign Language expression, explaining how e each affects the translations that you will see. The performers who are performing tonight are not deaf, but neither are they blind. Please refrain from any flash photography during any part of the show. In addition, deaf people use banging on objects to get each other's attention. This creates a vibration that the other person feels. Because of this deaf culture habit, the performers on stage are very sensitive to vibrations, which travel farther than the average hearing person realizes. So, please put your cell phones on silent or turn them fully off. Thank you, and enjoy the show. A man tells this story about deafness. When I was young, I became friends with the girl next door. We were good friends, but there was something odd about her. She could never understand what I was saying to her, and when I tried to act it out, she still didn't understand. To communicate, we simply pointed and dragged each other along. Then, one day, I realized how strange this girl was. We were playing in her home when her mother came up to us and started moving her lips. I was shocked. What was this? I went home and asked my mother, and she explained that the girl and her family were here, and that they didn't know how to sign. When I asked if there were other people like that, she said that almost everyone was like that girl. I was amazed. And that's when I realized that I was deaf, and they weren't. These people were not like me at all. The connection and sense of community within American deaf people comes not only from the common trait of deafness. There is a strong sense of communal history that is connected with the language they use. To understand this historical connection, one must understand the history of American Sign Language, which is directly linked to the history of French Sign Language. In 1761, while the rest of the world was teaching the deaf to assimilate to hearing culture, France was establishing its own public school entirely for deaf students educating them using the gestural language of the French deaf community. In 1813, the school attracted the attention of Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, who was touring Europe in search of a way to efficiently educate the deaf child of his neighbor. The head of the school <coughs> introduced Gallaudet to Laurent Clerc, a graduate of the program, and he taught Gallaudet French sign language. Eventually, Gallaudet was able to convince Clerc to come back to America with him. In 1871, these two men founded the American School for the Deaf in Connecticut, which was the first permanent school of its kind. Seven students enrolled in the first year. They were taught using French Sign Language. Soon, though, the children's own gestures became incorporated into the language, which created a new sign language that was not recognizable as its French parent. This new sign language became American Sign Language. The American deaf community recognizes this story as their own communal history. The story of French Sign Language is thus the story of American Sign Language. And the story of American Sign Language is the story of the deaf community thriving in Rochester.
there are several misunderstandings about sign language. The first of which is that it's universal. This simply isn't true. American Sign Language is different from the Sign Language of Britain, which is different from the Sign Language of China, and so on. Though several sign languages are linked to each other, such as French Sign Language and American Sign Language, most are distinct languages. The second misconception about American Sign Language is that it is either a collection of individual gestures or a code on the hands which signifies spoken English. Although ASL does use gestures, as English uses sound, it is not made up of gestures any more than English is made up of noises. Individual signs are themselves structured grammatical units, which are placed in slots within sentences according to grammatical rules. Although signers may fingerspell an English term or a name, the bulk of their sign communication is made up of signs, which are structured accordingly to an entirely independent set of rules. Deaf people construct their world around the resources of movement, form, and sound. The metaphor of silence has explanatory power for hearing people, <coughs> emphasizing as it does what they believe to be the central fact about deaf people. However, it is clumsy and inadequate as a way of explaining what deaf people know and do. The lives of deaf people are far from silent, but very loudly click, buzz, swish, pop, roar, and whir. Slap's goal tonight is to show you how loud sight can be and how key aspects of language and culture come together to form the American deaf community.